If you are not optimizing your product images on Amazon and off Amazon to both capture the attention of your customers, connect emotionally and communicate key details, then you are missing out on maximizing your full sales potential. So yes, I, the copywriter, am going to be helping you figure out how to maximize this oftentimes undeveloped piece of Amazon real estate. In fact, I continue to be surprised by how often I am looking at a product page, whether I'm doing an Amazon listing analysis for a client or a prospect, or I'm simply a customer needing to find a product to buy on Amazon. And of course, I can't help but have a critical eye. So I'm going to this product page and I'm looking, looking at their product images and Lo and behold, they are leaving money on the table. There's a whole host of different mistakes that I regularly see. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you not only what those mistakes are, but what you can do to fix them so that your product images are locked, loaded, and ready to convert maximum customers for improving that bottom line. So if that sounds great to you, then let's just go ahead and dive into it. First, Let's start off by establishing why product images are so important. Now, I already mentioned one of those being buyer behavior and different ways that this can either attract and convert those window shoppers or pull them in so that they want to learn more about your product. That's obviously very important, but great product images can do a lot of other things. They can connect more deeply with your customers by showing them that they are the target customer that's great for this product. They can also help give a greater sense of how your product functions in the world it, in order to help to minimize returns. This can be anything from showing sizing or showing people interacting with it, but helping to really get a sense of how this product exists in the real world, which is huge, and to stand out from the competition. So these are a, a key way that you can really differentiate yourself or like I see so many brands doing, not differentiating at all and just having product images that look nearly identical to every single other brand out there, which is a huge, huge missed opportunity. So of course, the place that you want to begin before you dig into any of this before you figure out who's going to take your product images, whether you're going to use AI to do some of your design work or you're going to hire a designer. All of those questions are irrelevant without a solid strategy. And your st strategy should start before you're even considering what kind of images to create. What do I mean by that? First of all, you need to get clear on who your customers are. And the best way of doing that is with a customer avatar. If you don't know how to create a customer avatar, I have a whole video that I will link, whichever side that's on, as well as in the description bar below that talks through both the significance and importance of creating a customer avatar, as well as walking you through how to do that. It even has a link to a full customer avatar worksheet that can really help speed this process along. But essentially your customer avatar is going to help you get a sense of who your customers are and who you're really going to be trying to sell to. Now, why is that important from your product imagery? that is going to then inform the types of models that you're using in your product images, the kind of styling, the design, the colors, the font, all of those decisions are going to be made through the lens of Will this connect with my customers? Will this communicate directly with them? Will this reassure them, build relationships, build trust, build excitement, and resonate with your target customers? If you don't have clarity around that, then you're just going to be trying to talk to everyone. And as the age-old cliche goes, when you try to talk to everyone, you talk to no one. So that is an incredibly important piece of any image strategy. Now, the second piece that is just as important is really thorough competitor analysis. Because ultimately, when you're selling on a marketplace like Amazon, you cannot just throw the same 
type of imagery up as your competitors. If you do that, then you're going to be making it harder for customers to choose you. You're going to be making it harder to stand out. You're going to be making it harder to build momentum, to carve out a segment of the category and to really be able to capture max maximum amount of customers. So in order to do that, you need to have a sense of how your competitors are presenting themselves on the platform and then think strategically about what you can do to be different, how you can position yourself in a unique way to speak directly to your customers. I have a video all about how to do thorough competitor analysis, and I also have a video about you're identifying your unique selling point and your value proposition. I highly recommend that you watch both of those videos so that you are able to put together a strategy that will help you stand out, grab eyeballs, connect with customers, and ultimately be in a position to succeed on Amazon, which is only increasingly more competitive. So Hopefully by this point, you understand the importance of doing this research. And if you're already selling on Amazon and you're thinking about what you can do to make your Amazon listing convert better, or you're thinking that it's time for a refresh, or you're considering upgrading to premium A plus content or any of those things, this is also a great opportunity to look critically at your product images to determine how you can really take those to the next level, how you can position them in a more unique way, and how you can leverage the information that you already have because you have real customers in order to take your business to the next level. So this is imperative whether you are getting ready to launch a new product or getting ready to revamp your product page. This is something that you should be doing with frequency and I hope if you haven't already that you've written on your to-do list or typed it into your pro project management tool of choice and you're going to go do this after the, this video because it will significantly impact the quality of the images and their strength and ability to do what you need them to do. I'm not going to be getting into the main image requirements today or going into the strategy for that too in depth. That's really a topic for a whole separate video, but I do want to mention that your main image in particular needs to follow a very specific set of guidelines from Amazon. And so all of these rules that I'm going to be suggesting for you in this next part of the video do not necessarily apply to your main image. You need to be really careful to make sure that you are following the guidelines that Amazon lays out because that can be cause for suspension or suppression and it can be a whole big hassle and costly error that you probably don't want to be dealing with. So let's get into what you can do to take your Amazon images to the next level. One, add text. Yes, I'm saying add text. I cannot believe how many product pages I look at on Amazon and they have beautiful images. They have lovely lifestyle photos. They have clearly invested a lot of money and time into really fantastic imagery. And then there is no text. And I promise you this isn't a video of cliches, but the cliche of a, a picture is worth a thousand words also holds true. But the problem is if you're not including text in your images, then you are essentially leaving their interpretation up to your customers. And as we know, everybody has a million different things going on in their mind at any one time. So why would you want to leave their interpretation up to somebody who doesn't understand your product fully yet, who doesn't understand your brand fully, and who is ripe and ready to buy your product if you can effectively communicate to them why this is the solution to their problems, why they got onto Amazon to search for this particular product in the first place. And so text, of course, is a really valuable tool that you have to be able to integrate into your imagery that is not only going to help point out key details and features that are important to understanding the product, but can really also help to create an emotional connection, get people excited, communicate the benefits, and help get customers excited to buy. Now, there is a caveat to that. 
We want to make sure that we are always, always, always considering the mobile user when we're thinking about integrating text into the images. More and more people are doing shopping on their phones. And also a lot of times the shopping process looks kind of like a two part where there's the browsing and the initial looking for, searching for, discovering the product on the phone, adding to cart, and then going perhaps to the desktop to then do that final round of research and ultimately purchasing the product. And so mobile plays a significant role, even sometimes in those purchases that ultimately happen on desktop. They might have originated on mobile to begin with. And so with that in mind, you need to make sure that when you're incorporating text into your images, that you are keeping it concise, that you're not trying to fit in too much because if somebody is looking at the image on a small screen, you really don't have a lot of space to be able to communicate too many ideas, incorporate too many words. You can very quickly make an image look messy, confusing, overwhelming, all of those feelings are going to create friction, which is going to send customers onwards to your competitors, which of course you do not want. So taking that idea and taking it to the next level, I would encourage you to Instagramify your images. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, first of all, really capturing how people are enjoying interacting with imagery in this time that we're in right now. So thinking about the types of images that you would see on Instagram, particularly in your category, perhaps real people, not all of the images necessarily being the most stylized or in a studio, but perhaps even taking images from user submitted images can be a great place to capture this in a way where you're not necessarily having to invest money and, and trying to do those yourself. But Instagramify your images. What do I mean by that? I mean creating images that people are going to enjoy looking at, that they're going to look like real people, that they're going to be in real settings. So in a, in a very lifestyle environment, can be a fantastic way for you to be able to set yourself apart, connect with customers. And this is increasingly more a social commerce driven world that we're living in. And so if you can reflect that in your images and connect with people in the way that they're getting more and more used to shopping, you're going to have a leg up on your competitors who are doing things in a more traditional, old fashioned way. Comparison charts are a fantastic way to quickly drive home a message of how you stand up to one of your top competitors. So this can be just like a down and dirty chart where you have two or three products side by side. Of course, you're going to design this in a way that makes your product look like the standout option. So if there are details that maybe you're a little bit more inferior in, perhaps don't include those in the comparison chart. But this is an easy way to help customers understand how you fit into the competitive landscape. As I've mentioned numerous times, one of the things that Amazon does not do a good job of for customers is helping compare products to their competitors. And that can be really frustrating for a customer because you're looking at each individual product page by itself, and it can be challenging to understand how these products stack up. So you can overcome some of that friction and make it easier for customers to determine if this product is a good fit by doing that for them right in the product images. You, of course, also have the ability to do that within your A-plus content or your premium A-plus content, but people may not even get there yet if they're all the way up in the product images. So give them a reason to scroll down, to learn more, to get bought into wanting to more seriously consider your product versus uh, the other competitors out there. 
As I mentioned with Instagramify your images, lifestyle images are so important, not only because they give customers an opportunity to see themselves reflected in the images, but also they bring the product out of this arbitrary computer world and put them into reality. So this is no longer just some mug sitting in on a white background. This is a mug sitting on my desk and it makes it easier for me as the customer to be able to make that connection that this is the mug for me. I'm now seeing that in my life. And it's these little tweaks that can make a substantial difference. But you also want to be thinking when you're creating your lifestyle images, you want to be going back to that research that you did. And you want to be thinking, how are my customers going to be using this product? Where are they going to be using this product? What is that environment going to look like? So maybe what is their interior design choice or what is their personal clothing style or what is uh, their age? All of those things are very important pieces of information to consider so that you are creating images that are going to resonate with your customers. Because if they are too far removed, then you might be in a position where you are trying to connect with them, but actually you're sending them away. So an example, and by the way, we're going to be looking at all of this in action shortly through a couple of side-by-sides with under-desk treadmills. And one of the thoughts that just came to mind with this is if you are a person and you are looking for an under desk treadmill and you do not consider yourself to be somebody that likes to go to the gym, you are someone that works from home, you've been sitting all day, you don't feel great, maybe you're even a little bit older, you're trying to wrap your mind about this whole remote work environment, maybe you're in your 40s or 50s, this is a big transition for you and you're invigorated by an, something you saw and you want to get an under desk treadmill. But all of the under desk treadmills that you're looking at are showing young people that are very sportively active with very, um, you know, all the, all the latest gym tech and their, the design of their house is all very much the aesthetic of someone that's in their twenties. Maybe you're not going to consider that this product is going to be a good fit for you. But if you were to come across a, an image of somebody that's closer to your age and that has an, an interior design aesthetic that is more similar to what you like, then suddenly now you are reinforced by the idea that, yeah, this is something that I would use. And even though this is a little bit of a costly investment on my part, I'm excited to be able to find a way to get my steps in, get some fitness while I'm also at the computer. So those are the kinds of things that you really want to be considering and you want to be considering, obviously, before the beginning, because if you're going to need live models, if you're going to need a set, or even if you're going to be doing all out of that design just with Photoshop and AI, you're still going to need to have clarity about what that should look like in order to be able to create images that are going to resonate specifically with your customers. Sort of along those same lines, you want to make sure that when you get to the editing side of things, that you are very on brand with all of the choices that you make. So if you are presenting your brand as one thing, like let's say that you are just going back to this treadmill. Let's say that now you're selling a treadmill to the gym enthusiast that is at the gym two hours a day and this for them is a way to make sure that they are always moving, that they are keeping that energy up, that they are in peak performance mode. So totally different than that first avatar that we were talking about. If that's the person that you're trying to sell to, then if you're using pastel colors and swirly fonts, there's a big disconnect there between the language and the brand identity that you're using and the way that you are presenting it in, uh, in all of the stylistic choices that you are making with your design. So there needs to be a clear focus, which again, you'll get from some of this initial research, but then you want to make sure that whoever is doing that design, who has, 
whoever's choosing the imagery, whoever is choosing colors, the fonts, the ways that they're editing things in, the icons, all of those things should be in line with who your brand is and how you're trying to communicate with your customers. Canva can be a surprisingly fantastic tool to do a lot of this, but I, I will say from my own personal experience that I can have a vision for things and I can critique things well, but when it comes down time for me to actually execute on those visions that I have, my abilities, even with Canva, which is incredibly easy to use and gives you so many options, are very, very limited. And because your product images are so important and such a vital piece of whether you're able to be successful or not, I strongly encourage you to find somebody that has the design skills necessary to be able to put your best foot forward as a brand. That means also really good photoshopping if you are not actually taking true lifestyle images. It's very off-putting when you go to a product page and you see a spoon that so clearly is not in that person's hand or a product that there's no way that it's actually in the kitchen. That's a big red flag for a lot of customers that indicates that mm, this product may not be that great of quality if they're not even taking great photos. So make sure that the things are photoshopped really well or taken in a live setting or you're using 3D rendering and then editing it in, but just all in a way that is going to make it look believable and natural because if not, you're going to be turning customers away and that's not good for your bottom line. I realized this was a lot. I'm going to now look at a couple of examples Okay, listing, we're going to be looking at Maxone under Dust Treadmill. And for our committer of many uh, infographic crimes, we're going to be looking at Sparex. So when we look at Maxone, first of all, Maxone has a very clear sense of who their customers are. This is communicated through the background design choices and that aesthetic, as well as the personal style of the model that they're including, the color choice they have, the style of icons, the font, all of that is very dialed in and very clear. So that's excellent work on their part. I would say they stray from that when you get into the A plus content, just as an aside, I realize that's not what this particular video is about, but I would be remiss for not pointing that out. Now, where I do think they fall flat is they try to incorporate a lot of text into some of their images and it just doesn't have to be so wordy. A great example is this ultra slim design image, the fifth image on their product page, and it says, with the height of an incredible 14 centimeters, the treadmill can be easily stored under your bed, sofa, or behind a door. That could just say, you know, the, the 14 centimeters, I'm not even sure it's necessary there. I think it could be included in an image that's just pointing out some of the specs of the product. However, even if they wanted to include that, it could be slim, 14 centimeter design, and then easily store under bed, bullet, sofa, bullet, behind a door, bullet, and then move under the desk, under desk walk to anywhere in the house. So wheels make it easy to move wherever you want it much tighter, much clearer. Even in that case, that second integrated wheels, I would really wanna make that a separate call out because the call out of this product image is ultra slim design. And ideally you want to have one core message of the product image in order to make it maximum effect. And so if the fact that this is really easy to move is another big selling point of this particular product, then that deserves its own product image. Another thing that I think would probably be helpful is to connect more to why somebody would want this product. I think that's another really big missed opportunity on their part that would just push this that much further into successful territory. So this is very feature focused and very much talking about how to use it and how it functions, not necessarily 
the kind of experience that it's giving to the customer. And because they are so clear on how they want to be perceived from a brand perspective, I imagine they're also quite clear on who their customers are and their customers' desires for this particular type of product may differ slightly from some of their other treadmill competitors. So this is another way for them to be able to differentiate all the more, connect with customers on a deeper level, get them excited. This is not an inexpensive product. This is $370 before tax. So how can you really help them understand and feel good that this is going to be a worthwhile use of their money? In contrast, let's look at Sparax, which is just frankly, a little bit of a hot mess. So Sparax has really strange font choice, difficult to read even on desktop. These very strange backgrounds and it's almost like trying to be high tech but ending up looking like something that's very old fashioned. They do have a product comparison chart, which I realize is something that I said is a great thing to include, but this is a very poor execution. First of all, it's not clear that this is a side-by-side -side comparison. It's really odd the way that the woman is sort of putting her arm around the treadmill, and it's so difficult to read. It's not clear that one is X's and one is check marks. So it's rather than helping bring clarity to me and helping me understand how this product compares to the competition, I'm left feeling more confused and more turned off than ever. On mobile, this is going to be really difficult to navigate. I don't have a clear sense of who the target customer is. I don't have a clear sense of what makes this better or different than the competition. I don't even really have a sense of truly, it's just all very confusing. Why would somebody want this? Why should I be spending $260 to buy this? Why should this be the under desk treadmill that I'm choosing. They are not answering that question in the product images and they're also definitely not answering it in the in the A plus content. There's another thing to point out is this really emphasizes the importance of really high quality images because if especially if you are selling something at a high price point, but then you are not investing in high quality images, I'm not going to be convinced that there's an alignment between how you are presenting your product and the amount of money that you're asking me for and the quality that I'm going to associate with it. So there's a lot of room for improvement here. And I imagine that if they would make those changes that they would be selling even better than they already would be, they would probably be able to compete at a higher price point, so giving them higher better profit margins, and just a lot of room for improvement. So let that last point really sink in. When you have a clear sense of who your customers are, when you understand how you fit into the competitive landscape, and when you dial all of that in from every single aspect of your imagery, your text, and the way that you're showing up with your product page, you have more flexibility with pricing. That is huge, especially as we're seeing increased prices on everything from shipping to advertising. This is going to give you more flexibility as a brand to be able to continue to turn a profit and grow and expand your product line and do whatever it is that your heart desires in order to grow your business. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out the next video that should be suggested to you right now, and I will see you soon. Bye.